Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 21. We are now able to legally drink in the United States of Aprilwork Podcast with your boys, Matt, Mike, and Mike, Rest Pass, Wallen, and Peach. The gang's all here. Rest Pass, how are you feeling today, bud? I am fantastic. I'm excited for this lovely, lovely episode we have here today. Good. I am glad to hear that. Peach, how are you feeling? I feel great. Me too. That's great to hear. Are you excited for this episode? I am. That is that is great to hear. So, let's jump right into it. I got nothing crazy or anything fancy really to to say or to uh, start with. Should we? Uh, Didn't like speak three about the three huge three things happen. I guess technically two things t- huge happened, but there's well, nothing you want to say. Nothing that wants to be I, talked about prior to this episode. I wasn't going to bring them up. Because I, I actually haven't read much into them other than just seeing the headlines. So we're recording this on Sunday. It was just announced. Well, Ivan Vokolov had, has passed away. I don't know the reason why, but he was like 70. So, Do you mean Nikolai? Nikolai Volkov. <laughs> Volkov. Not Ivan Vokolov. I <laughs> Who is I, I, Ivan Vokolov? I, I had a wedding last night. I'm very tired from it. I didn't sleep. Still hungover. Oh my so. god! You know what? I'm sorry. Well, I shouldn't have done this to you. Let's just yeah. get on with the episode. R. I. P. R. I. P. Ivan Vokolov and Nikolai Kolov. And, yes. Uh, and then Brian Christopher as well. Uh, yeah. Apparently, great master sex a. Yeah, apparently it was uh, suicide. So, um, that and Brickhouse. What'd you say? Brickhouse Brown. Brickhouse. Oh yeah, I don't. I didn't know who that person was. So, um, yeah, the, so I wasn't even going to bring those up, but now that you mentioned it, Mike, I guess we did just bring them up. Yeah. So RIP. Yep. Our condolences um, go out to their families. So this week's episode, the women's evolution. What are you laughing at, Mike? Yeah. I, one hell of a transition. What? Yeah. Why? Well, it's hard to transition away from that <laughs> gently. So, no, we are talking about the women's evolution. So, at the end of last week's episode, we kind of tried to predict it, predict what Stephanie McMahon's big announcement was going to be on last Monday Night Raw. Um, Thank you, Alan Santos. Yes. Yes, but he, he I, gave us the heads up. It would definitely be the women's tag titles. I, uh, he was the, yeah, that's right. Yes. Did, but, <laughs> well, here's the thing. I don't think he's wrong. I think they're just going to wait until... Closer. So, we're, before we jump into that, uh, WWE announced that they are doing, apparently, what they t- coined as the first ever all-women's pay-per-view, which is not the case whatsoever. Um, but the first all-women's pay-per-view on October 28th at the Nassau Coliseum. Um, and uh, Stephanie McMahon, during the announcement, said that there are going to be over 50 women competing that night. Um, I think that's really... It, like kind of like what was announced for it so far. The main poster that they had advertised for it has Ronda Rousey, Charlotte Flair, and Alexa Bliss on the front of it. Um, and that's kind of really about all we know. Uh, the color scheme looks like to be very, using very similar to the Mae Young Classic. Um, though, actually, I apologize. The one thing I think they did announce is that the winner of the upcoming Mae Young tournament is going to be determined at the evolution WWE evolution okay. that month so i think that's sort of the only match that has been announced but obviously the we don't know who's going to be competing in that yet so uh to kind of address what you were talking about earlier mike uh information was out there about women tag team titles um and that was going to be part of stephanie's an- announcement as well um i think they're still coming so no, I I think so too. It was more. Um, he was trying to give us a heads up because, as everybody knows, if you've listened to us before, we record on Sunday, and the announcement obviously happened on Monday. So he was trying to kind of give us the heads up. So if we wanted to talk about it, we don't release our episode till Tuesday. We kind of be ahead of the game, and actually, this is exactly why we don't do that. 
<laughs> yeah, we would have. We <laughs> because probably... we would have had a full episode talking about the women's tag titles that well, would our... not have been announced. What we even said in last week's episode was we were going to do tag teams in this episode on top because of the women's tag team title announcement. Yeah. Um, but, Peach, are you getting all your bills paid over there and stuff like that <laughs> just with the clicking I hear? Yes. Um, I'm actually was just reading up more on the evolution. Well, what what questions do you have? You the have women's two revolution. All right. That's what we should be talking about here. I know the evolution is the pay-per-view. We should be talking about the revolution. Well, I was just wondering, like, is there 50 male competitors on every pay-per-view? If they're claiming 50 women. They're going to have a battle royal just to get a bunch of them in there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, That's what's going to happen. I mean, in a a sense, it it sucks. But it's the first one. It's kind of um, like the Women's Royal Rumble. You're not going to see that many uh, former women's wrestlers in every women's Royal rumble i'm assuming they're gonna do it every year now um you're not gonna see that many people coming back they did it because it was the first one yeah and and that's what this is if this becomes a yearly pay-per-view which i'm assuming it will um you're not gonna have 50 competitors everyone but because it's the first one and it's groundbreaking and and all this other stuff they um they want to get as many involved as they can especially the ones that kind of came before them so well that's the first match that's being pretty big largely teased for it um was a mickey young versus trish stratus match because i think it was actually confirmed that trish stratus and lita are going to perform on it so like mickey Mickey, james mickey young huh (laughs) you said mickey young no i said mickey james peach i don't i didn't hear him (laughs) And he right. doesn't listen. He doesn't <laughs> listen we're even done, while we're recording. When we're done, we'll we'll re-listen to this. You said Mickey Young at first. I was confused. I wasn't sure if you were talking. I didn't know if there was somebody else. To be honest with you, I'm telling yeah. you, you said Mickey Young. But okay, we'll we'll um, go back and listen. With that being said, um, uh, well, I think Mickey James had sent out a tweet uh, about it, and or like, but a Trish Stratus Mickey James match. Actually, now just looking at the way I talk, I probably did say Mickey Young. Um. May Young. Yeah. But the um that's the first kind of match is kind of and I hope they do that match, honestly. Oh yeah, that would be a awesome. Nice, a nice nostalgic match. I think it'd be interesting to see how they can go. Maybe Mickey can reenact their WrestleMania twenty two match, I think, where she like did the <laughs> V thing with the tongue and that's yeah. like pins that pissed Vince off so bad. <laughs> um that's, but, I'm but, like I'm like picturing all these matches. Like I I'd love like some type of, and I think you're under the same impression as me with the this will probably be the finals of the women's tag title if they do some type of tournament will probably be there too. But I would love to see some type of like four way like the Bellas versus Lay Cool versus uh, what uh, Bailey and and Sasha. Versus like the Riot Squad or something like that. No, what was um, what did um, Beth Phoenix and Natalia have a name when they were together? Uh, don't know. I forget, but that 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 would be another team I would think of. But I think they should no. also be in the tournament, not just um, for the tag titles. Um, what do you think? I already thought what the what I think the main event is going to be for this pay per view. Do you guys have any thoughts? What might be your main event for this event? If they had, uh, wait a second, it's in October, right? So they October. have plenty of time. I'm, I'm think I'm thinking SummerSlam. They have time, but I, I don't know that they could force it. And the, the, I mean the the obvious choice would be to get your four horsewomen versus four horsewomen. Um, they have all four of them under contract, all four of the MMA's four horsewomen. But how you go about that in such a small time? Um, I mean, it can happen. You have you have uh, not to get too far into other stuff, but you have Kari Sane is finally getting a title shot against Shayna Baszler. Um, you don't necessarily need to have the other two of the four horsewomen, which I have no idea what their names are. Um, you don't need to have them. 
go through NXT. Or you have them in NXT, but you still have them compete in that match. But in my mind, that's the thing I think everybody's waiting for, has been waiting for for some time. Um, that would be a perfect way to main event it. That that was a lot better than what my thought was. Peach, did you have any thoughts on what what, what might main event this? No clue. Like, I was half thinking the the two women from the TV show Glow have them main event it, get out there. I, I, not uh, so. Let's not go main event status. But I wouldn't be surprised to see like Allison Brie. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised to see them as like a celebrity match. Yeah, no, because not I at think because but... I think they I think they got trained to legitimately wrestle. So I think I wouldn't be surprised to see them in there, especially because they were just recently on a episode of SmackDown, like maybe a month ago or something like that. Yeah. So WWE's working with them, so I, I hands down see them being a um, a part of the uh, show. I was gonna say Rousey versus Oscar. Okay. I don't think I think if you're looking at storylines and what would you what match would you want to headline your first women's pay per view? The what, more obvious one to me is Oscar ver- or uh, Rousey versus Charlotte. But. I don't think they're going to pull the trigger on that one. I think they're saving that to Mania, um, to headline Mania this year. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree and, with you. And that's, uh, they, and, and that's what I hope they do. Yeah. If they were to see the problem with Asuka and, and, and Rousey is the way they've been booking Asuka. Like, she needs to get back into, like, her dominant kind of uh phase here like the 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 way she's kind of been booked as a joke a, a little bit with the whole carmella thing and everything like that it's not really i mean it it'll still do well but i i don't know and again i don't see the four horsewomen thing happening purely purely because i do believe that the first women's tag team champions are going to be sasha banks and bailey yep so I think they're going to win the tag titles in that pay per view. So I don't really see that happening. Um, but it would be a way to tease Charlotte and Rousey. Um, you don't ever have to have them in the ring at the same time. No, um, I think and, I, what I and, what I think is going to happen is uh, like I think for the pay per view they're going to set up somehow Rousey versus Oscar. Um have Rousey win and I think it's they're going to give Asuka the Smackdown Women's Championship or something like that I think Carmella's going to lose the title maybe at so I don't know if it's announced for SummerSlam yet but I'm assuming we're going to get Asuka versus Carmella at SummerSlam oh no I'm sorry we, we're we getting ba- uh, Becky versus Becky Lynch. Carmella yeah. sorry so I'm okay so my whole thing is completely off then well um, maybe, maybe they have Asuka beat Becky Lynch between SummerSlam and the Women's Favorite Reveal yeah, and then set up and, just basically Rousey versus Oscar, yeah. and that's um, if Becky Lynch w- Becky Lynch wins at SummerSlam. Yeah, um, but yeah, you can honestly, I don't see Rousey um, beating Alexa Bliss for the title, but that could technically end up being a champion versus champion come uh, come that pay per view. They could, but they probably won't just because, um, like you, you're you're already doing that probably at. Survivor Series, which is a month after that, because they do that now because they did it last year to where the the tag team or like the champions of each um, show fought the other champion or at um at Survivor Series. So, um, but what other? So I think we. So you mentioned the like four-way tag team match with like the tag teams peach are there any matches you would possibly be interested in seeing on a this all women's pay-per-view card no i'd like to see a couple gimmicks like i'm not too concerned about seeing like the older women wrestle like the just like as a nostalgia thing but i would like to see like women's wrestling like the the whole revolution of the wrestling what I'd rather see it be a good wrestling pay per view than just like uh, uh, like something for the fans. 
a good. I hold on. I got maybe it's I'm tired. I got confused by what you were saying there. Like I, I don't think I have anything in particular that I would want to see, but I think that if if it's the first one, it has to be legitimate. It has to have a bunch of good wrestling involved. You're gonna get that. Any, of, yeah, I think you're gonna get that anyway, just because the state of women's wrestling now is not what it was eight years ago or whatever like that. Um, so I think you're right. That's what, like, I'm not looking forward to like the models coming back to wrestle. I'm looking forward to like the now talent and the upcoming talent. That's what a problem is going to be is this first one is going to be more gimmicky and less really good wrestling. Uh, Purely because they just want to get everybody involved. I mean, that's, that's one of the biggest things that they're, they're trying to squeeze 50, 50 women into this um unless you're getting special guest referees and and special announce you know and and announcers and stuff like that and that's how they're going to squeeze 50 in here you're going to have some type of battle royal it's going to go on for about an hour um you know to just kind of take up time of this thing which which sucks because it's going to be like the the, well what was the greatest world rumble was that 50 50 men obviously this won't be that but yeah. um now i to actually talk about time real quick and i want to ask you both this do you think this will be time like their normal pay-per-views yeah i think it starts at seven ends at 11 yeah they'll hour have their pre- dark matches hour, and shit hour pre-show yeah no 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 different okay i thought uh, they added an hour to all their pay-per-views they did so now the pay-per-views actually start at seven the pre-show starts at six. Okay. Yeah. So All that's right. what. Yeah. So you're will... thinking the same thing. Pre-show at six and. Yeah. Yeah. I. It, I. They can't change it. They can't like if they're, like how they similar. I think we said to like the Royal Rumble, they can't make any changes. They can't do this differently than another pay-per-view because then it it can show a bias and things like that. Yeah. Um. Here's a question that I had kind of brought up. Is it going to be 50 women signed with WWE, or are they going to bring in some independent stars? Similar to what they did with the other... Similar to what they did with the Mae Young Classic. I I think you'll see... You know what? It's tough because they have the UK NXT starting up. They just oh. actually just started recording uh, this weekend. Yeah, and I um, think... WWE has like so one of the names like was like Tony Storm, but I'm assuming I think she's signed with WWE or with the yeah. UK scene. So she's uh, they, she's they have like up. a roster now. I was actually looking at um, they actually have a roster and everything. So they have enough to probably do 50 of their own currently signed. So I I think you're going to see mostly currently signed plus legends. Yeah, the only uh, the, big. I, I think I have one big name that might show up, maybe, but I, I don't even think so anymore. But what were you going to say, Mike? No, I was just going to say the the only people that aren't under contract in my eyes are going to be ex um, WWE wrestlers. I doubt you're going to see like an independent wrestler that nobody's ever heard of, or and I shouldn't say nobody the the casual WWE audience has not heard of. Like um, it'd be it'd be awesome if Tessa Blanchard would show up at this event. Yes, it, it would. But um, she just signed a contract with Impact, so I was thinking, oh, maybe they'll bring, but that won't happen. I could see Emma making a one-time appearance. Um, yeah, yeah. See, that's you need you need someone who um, who the fans might recognize. That, yeah. That's that's the biggest thing. Like you said that, that Tess, Tessa Blanchard would be amazing, and I assume someday she will be um, in a WWE. You know ring but they would almost have to do kind of what they did with uh, the young bucks and kenny omega they would almost have to start mentioning her just to get the fans to you know again the casual fans not the people that know who she is the casual fans to be like oh who is this and they start looking up about her and and almost hyping it up first you kind of can't just have her come in there and show up out of nowhere because they don't do nods to to the um, hardcore fans like that, unfortunately. Yeah, true. Yeah, there's about 30 women on the 
WWE roster. Is that including NXT? No, no, just the, the main roster. I believe NXT has about 10. And then the UK so. NXT, I think, has about 8. The, so the last I seen. 50. So plus you'll get Stephanie and well that's what I say you're gonna have Trish, um, you'll have. Uh, I think they said they've confirmed that like Trish and Lita are already kind of confirmed for it. Yeah, uh, um, I'm assuming just about every female you've seen in the Women's Royal Rumble, for the most part, has a chance of coming back. Yeah, it would be awesome I think to have a Trish versus Lita match, um. I don't think you're going to get that though. Like I said, I think you're more, more than I think you're going to get Lita as a commentator. Um, but I think the match that's realistically possible is Trish versus Mickey James. Yeah, um, and and that that would be awesome. Yeah, that'd be definitely. I think that that would be a great opening match. Start off the show with that. Now, um, do you? I know they have one woman ref, and I know this because. I was right in there. They have two? They just signed a second one. I don't know who okay. it is, but they did, NXT did just sign a second one. Uh, I know the, the one that's down in NXT now, and I would uh, I was writing the reviews for We Podcast We Know Things, which actually now I'm kind of transitioning to power rankings, but um, she's huge. Humongous. <laughs> like I, I, This is completely off topic right now, but she's like huge. Nia Jax, like Nia Jax, a big woman. I mean, God, yeah, she's huge. And it, it's so bad because she only refs for the most part women's matches, and they're all so small. And I always say, like, it's so, like, unbelievable to have a ref look like she could just turn around and kill both of the people in the ring. Like, they need to put her in men's matches. But, end of the rant there. Um, do you see them doing stuff like that where there's not even, like, male refs? Like, they do special referees and stuff like that? Uh, nah, I think you'll get a couple main men ref you'll get you'll yeah i don't think they're going to go out of their way completely to do all female referees because that's that's, that's, part of me was thinking you get the you get um lillian garcia back you know you 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 pull out three announcers you let renee young go down there with you know like you said lead or or somebody down there like if they wanted i I realize you can't go all out like that but they kind of can they can. I just have an issue with it. I just think then it becomes too much of the gimmick. It it becomes too forced that this is women, this is women, to where, to me, this pay-per-view is a natural progression. There's enough women, there's enough going on that they can do a women's only pay-per-view um, and make it special. I think I, – I, I always hate it when they do the forced stuff. So like, like with um, – like back in the day when Trish and Lita main event at Raw that first time, that was a natural storyline progression on the way everything was playing out, and it fit in perfectly. Sasha and um, Bailey when they main event at the NXT Takeover Respect one, again natural progression that made sense for the way the storyline was going overall. When the Women's Revolution got forced on WWE's main roster. A lot of that stuff got forced. So, like, Charlotte and Sasha main eventing at the Hell in a Cell match, that got forced because it was the first hell, women's Hell in a Cell, and the storyline really didn't need it. And we, as with most of those Hell in a Cell pay-per-views, those storylines don't need Hell in a Cell. They're just using it as a gimmick to call it out once a year. Um, the women's Money in the Bank ladder match now, that did not main event the pay-per-view. That kind of opened it. And that was, I think, a perfect position for it because it it was the first one. It was important. Um, yeah, it had a screwy finish when it was Ellsworth that um, pulled down the briefcase and gave it to Carmella. But that just kind of fit naturally onto the card. The Royal Rumble this year, the women's one finished. I think that made sense. I don't feel like that was as forced upon as a lot of the other stuff. If they do, like, all female... I think Renee Young definitely needs to be probably your lead announcer, though, for this. Um, that, that was actually my next thing. I was going to say, could you see her, like, almost her with Corey Graves and maybe, like, Lita, like, them three I, or something like that, where it's still... You still have the women, but, yeah, I, I was going to completely agree with you and say Renee Young should be the Michael Cole she should she should be the main person for this. 
Yes. Yeah, he, he she definitely needs to because she has the chops to be a legitimate lead announcer on a normal wrestling show. And I think that's why I was saying that because I feel like they have her. Um, they have some, you know, ex women's wrestlers that that sound pretty good on the mic. I just hope they don't put Stephanie McMahon out there with her for the whole the whole match because we, yeah, we we've I'm seen worried. how we seen what happened with the women's Royal Rumble. Um, yeah, I think yeah, I definitely think you're gonna get that. <laughs> um, but what guys do you think will play a part in the in that pay per view? I hope what? none. None. You don't think like Ellsworth will be out there and Te- Healy? Technically, it, it, he's fired. Yeah. Technically, which I think I don't know if that like I kind of hope he isn't. I liked it when he came back, and I hope it's not. I, I hope he stays permanently. Um, a guy. Guys need to take part if it makes sense. It, again, if it makes sense for the storyline, um, like um, in a Candice LeRae match, if Tommaso Ciampa comes in and destroys her, that makes sense. Um, John Cena proposes to but, Nikki Bella. <laughs> again. Um, but I hope that they don't have like Let's say that Maurice and Nikki Bella and John Cena and The Miz come out with them. Like I feel I, like, yeah. I feel I like agree. at that point you're purposely putting them out there because you feel like the show needs John Cena out there or The Miz. Like I, that's why, like you said, where it makes sense, I don't want it to make sense. I don't want them to put them out there because you you made reference about how it's not the first All Women's Pay Per View and it, and it's not, but. Impact, which has won every year, I was looking at their cards. I think only one or two can be legitimately known as an all women's pay per view. So, because on, at they, least two of them have men in mixed tag matches. Hold on, dumb question. They, I thought TNA only had one. They do one every year. Yep. What's what's the name? So the one I was reading up was was the knockouts knockdown one they're from their like one night only series. Yeah, and every year they've been doing it. Really? Yep. I didn't know that either until I just looked it up to research for this. That's why I figured we'd get a little bit off WWE, a little bit off this pay per view, and kind of stick with. So yeah, yeah. If you go and look, they've had it every year. What's um, it called? Is it knockouts? Yeah, yeah. The same same name as the first one. Um, yeah, but like they're it. like on like two of the okay. pay per views. You find it or no? Nah, yeah, well, well, but yeah, continue what you were saying though. Um, it was just like it. There were some pay per views, you know. There was a mixed tag match thrown in, or like there was one where they had, I guess, whatever male wrestler they would come out with came out with them. You know, it was just like. Eh. Did you really need them to walk you out? Like, well, it, if again, again it, if it makes sense storyline wise, if it makes like it, sense like storyline else, wise, I get it. And I don't know the storyline. I don't okay. know any of the storylines from TNA. I won't act like I know about any storylines. But to throw a mixed tag match in something that's promoted as an all women's pay per view, that's not needed. It's yeah, not. No, I I agree. But my thing is to where, you know, James Ellsworth always accompanies Carmella to the ring. Obviously, before he's fired or whatever like that. But if at this pay per view, Carmel or um, Ellsworth doesn't, I think that's stupid. Yeah, because it's yeah. somebody that but, always accompanies uh, accompanies but, her. Now, but that's what if, I was saying. Where if Cena shows up with the Bella twins to be in their corner, when does he ever come out with Nikki Bella? Exactly. I would be fine with the Miz coming out with Maurice though, if that happened. Yeah, because she doesn't really wrestle anymore, and they're usually tied at the hip. That makes exactly. a little bit more sense. That 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 does make the that does make sense there. So, um, yeah. Again, if it's all makes sense. So let so let's talk about the non WWE stuff. So Stephanie during the announcement said, "This is the first all women's wrestling pay per view," and I just laughed because I'm like, "That's just arrogant." I wish she would have rephrased her. Uh, sorry, Peach. We'll let you finish what you're doing real fast, and then uh. <laughs> well he heard he heard let's get on the non WWE stuff and he knew that his knowledge 
is going out the window. He's done nothing but prepare for the WWE side of it. We didn't warn him that this was a revolution episode, not an evolution episode. And well, and, in our yeah. text message conversation, I said, um, <laughs> um, in the okay, uh, I'm I'm only laughing extra because. PG texted or typed in the Skype message thing, and he said I opened it away from the mic. The one I record on. Yeah, <laughs> so you, you may may or may not have heard it, but we heard it. <laughs> oh, no, I brought it to the mic. <laughs> well, when you originally mic. opened it, when Walton originally right. said it, he doesn't sound like a crazy person. Um, <laughs> now I lost my train of thought. Um, <laughs> you said in the original text message. <laughs> No, no, no. You said not. Stephanie said oh, it's Stephanie, the first ever. Thank you, thank you. Stephanie <laughs> said, um, yeah, this is it's the like first. away from WWE. This is the first all <laughs> women. Yeah, I'm trying to finish my thought. The fact that you know Stephanie McMahon's a part of WWE, Peach, has just, you know. Improved my wrestling knowledge. Yes. Um, She said that this is the first all women's pay-per-view, and I just laughed because that's not wrong, because I remember the knockouts one they did for the one night only back in, like, 2013, um, to where Gail Kim won a... And that's what I... I I forgot what happened there, but um, it was basically a tournament for a queen of the knockouts title or something like that. Um, And it was... And I actually liked the style of it. It was a... um, Winner of the each match got entered into a, a gauntlet match, and then at the end of the gauntlet match, whoever won was declared the queen of the knockouts, which was won by Gail King. Gail Kim. You had some actually pretty good names in there: ODB, uh, uh, Tyra Terrell, uh, who else? Tara, Gail Kim, obviously, uh, Mickey James when she was there, Serena. Um, Jillian Hall. Jillian Hall was in it. I didn't realize she was in TNA. Um, Velvet Sky. Um, obviously some of those are the more um, TNA names, but a decently stacked card for um, the event. Um, so that was I remember being the first ever kind of all women's pay per view, and. With the way TNA was doing these one night only t- style pay per views, this knockout thing made a lot of sense, yeah. and it worked. It worked really well. Um, TNA is known for a lot of great women's matches before even WWE started. Like I know the whole um, Gail Kim Tyra Terrell rivalry blew up, and because like that though they had some great matches. Like I think I remember. Um, uh, one clip of I think it was Gail Kim slamming uh, Terrell down onto the uh, side mat, like off the ramp, and it looked devastating. But like TNA was doing all this women's stuff well before WWE was, and ha- having occurred naturally. Yeah. Um, Ring of Honor obviously has done a lot. They have the whole Women of Honor division. Um. There, I forget who their champion is. I'm going to look that up now. Who? Oh, wait, currently? Yeah. It's, um, don't say it, don't say it. It's, uh, Rosemary, I think, right? Let me look for you. No, it is, uh, Sumi Sakai. I don't okay. know who that is. Rosemary is TNA Impact's champion. Oh, who? who and, I, what did you just reference? <laughs> women of it's, Honor. Oh, okay. Sorry. It shows yeah. you that I was not paying. I thought you were still on Impact. No, no. Well, I was I was so distracted by Peach and uh, Well, the, um, <laughs> speaking of Impact, Peach, do you know any of this, what we're talking about? Not at all. Okay, great. Um, feel free, if you know anything, to jump right in and say, uh, the Women of Honor, um, or well, let's jump into Impact because I can talk a little bit, maybe more to that. But the, um, yeah, the Rosemary Alley feud's really good. Yeah, or was yeah. Really I've good. I've only seen bits and pieces. Again, I'm not gonna fake like I know a whole lot, but I, I yeah. it was stuff that I've seen over, and I've kind of like watched little bits here and there. Yeah. Um, like, I re- also remember, it was like, I think, I forget what happened, like, I think Rosemary got fired, and then Allie came out, um, 
dressed up as Rome, Rosemary, which was pretty cool. Um, and then, like we mentioned, Tessa Blanchard is signed like an Impact deal, so she's signed with them for like maybe like a year or something like that, maybe two years. Nah. Um, and then you have like like I said, the Women of Honor. Um, but then you have other just independent women's wrestling companies like Shimmer and Shine. I know those companies pretty well. Um, or at least heard of them before. And that's <laughs> I was going to say, hell well. Not, not to creepy <laughs> well, like enough to know some of the people that are in it and things like that. Um, I think Progress also has a pretty decent women's, women's division. I know that's where Tony Storm's from. Just because, right. like, I was, um, I'm going. Progress has come come to Philadelphia. I think on on August fourth, and Tony Storm was announced for it. So I was pretty excited to kind of see her wrestle there. Um, it's also cool to see ex WWE stars get big names in the independent scene, like um, Emma, uh, Tennille Dashwood. I think is what her real name is. Like, yeah. she has a pretty good career outside of WWE just from the women's side. She for being an actual one in WWE. Yeah, which is dumb. I don't, like, the, the Paige-Emma rivalry was great. Especially because I believe that was for the first, that was for the first NXT Women's Championship, right? Was that the finals of the tournament? or Well, that was, I think, on the first NXT TakeOver pay-per-view Maybe. was Emma versus Paige. Yeah, the fir- the end of the tournament, I believe, wasn't it? Um, was it Natty N- versus Natalia? I was gonna say Nat- Natty was at the end of that tournament. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, but you get you you get excited to see actually women come into NXT. Like a big deal was made about Kari Sane. WWE just signed. Um, was it I- Iro? Um. Another uh, Japanese woman wrestler. I am not going to try to say her name because I'm going to just butcher it today. But I've watched some of her stuff, and that's real good. Um, I think there's a tag team for your women's tag team championship, Ka- Kairi Sane and her, because I believe they are friends. Like, they're um, joining up as a tag team makes sense. Right. Um, but the... Um, I don't, yeah, like, I think, Mike, you said you, I'm not going to act like I know a lot about it, but I don't, I haven't followed a lot more of the stuff outside of WWE from the women's side. I just know that it has existed, and major stories have come up outside of WWE for other companies being on the forefront more than WWE was in the beginning. Right. And, like I said, like, a lot of those companies, that came naturally. Yeah. On, like, the forced WWE side. Um yeah, that's. I mean, again, I, I can only kind of talk about TNA a little bit here, more than the rest of them. Um, but like you said, back when it, you know, Gail Kim and Awesome Kong and everything was there running at TNA, that was the thing they had going for them. I mean, that that was the the differentiator between them and WWE was women's wrestling and the X division. To be honest with you, yeah, that, that was the you know. That was the thing that if you're going to sit there and watch TNA, it's going to be more for those things than anything else. Uh, I mean, me personally, I I loved Kurt Angle. So when he went there, I watched a little bit more. Um, Christian, I'm I'm a pretty big fan of. Um, I know a lot of people, you know, they love Jeff Hardy, stuff like that. But um, that's kind of what kind of brought you in, I think, a lot of people. But then what kind of kept you there watching it was the women's wrestling in the next division. So, yeah, they, they were doing it well before uh, WWE is now. Yeah. And then, hell, even WWE, like, their NXT did a better job of promoting women's, like, the women's wrestling naturally. Than... Oh, my God. They are right now. That They still are. Yeah. And it's oh. funny because I, I – if we go back, I'm pretty sure I said this on an episode. It could have been before we started an episode. I talked about how um, – I remember talking about how they needed to keep uh, Nikki Cross down because their women's division's weak. It is not. No. <laughs> it absolutely no. is not. No, at the time, I thought – you know what it was? It was because they haven't they – de- they didn't develop the characters yet. And now they have. And it's like uh, – I sit there and I watch somebody like um, Lacey Evans. 
Oh, she is great. She's a prop. I, lo- I love her gimmick. I love everything they're doing with her. And she will always be the number two heel while Shayna Baszler is there. And that's fine. She will be that prep where the good guy finally gets over on her to jump. And that's fine. But when Shayna leaves, she's a perfect heel to be down there. She'll be down there much longer than Shayna is. And that's fine. But just watching, you know, between Candice LeRae, uh, Kari Sane, uh, Bianca Blair, uh, Belair is awesome herself. I, that, I did not like way- her gimmick at first. I hate the hair whip, to be honest with you. I absolutely hate the hair whip. And if she never attempts to do that again in a match, yeah, I I would absolutely love that. But her athleticism, and, and she's a freak of nature, too. She's that person that will come in and just body press Charlotte with ease. And you'd be like, oh, my God. Like, they have a lot of talent right there waiting. And that's why that tag team championship with, with the rumored rule of being able to get defended over all, you know, all shows, whether it be SmackDown, Raw, NXT, and even the UK NXT, I yeah. think is perfect because they have plenty around, but you don't want to force them all up on the main roster right now. Um, I like Bianca's Blair hair hair thing. <laughs> I, I don't mind it, multiple but she's girls? just she's just she don't need yeah. it. She she just doesn't need it. I don't uh, know. Peach, if, hold if, on, Peach. What was your question? Haven't they tried that move with like multiple women now? What move? The the hair whip, uh, like that Indian girl was doing it not too long ago. Uh, who was the other one that was doing it? You mean it's always you just... mean the 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 woman that we seen at the Royal Rumble try to do it? The uh, I don't. I'm not sure. Wasn't it Bianca Blair? Nobody's had had has had. I don't think like long but, enough but, hair to was, be able to do. Was Bianca Blair in the, the – was it the Women's Royal Rumble or was it the, the WrestleMania Battle Royal? She wasn't in the Women's Royal Rumble. She was, she was in the in... WrestleMania Battle Royal, right, where they had the NXT versus the regular. They kind of split the ring off. Yeah, I'm thinking she was in that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it was the first one to compete yeah. in the WWE. Uh, that the was Indian her girl. who did the hair Kativa thing. Devi was the Indian girl. Who? Are you talking about from WrestleMania? Kativa Devi. Are you talking about from that match at WrestleMania? The women's match at WrestleMania? <laughs> mm, I don't know. I'm reading about her again. Because Blanc- uh, 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 Bianca Belair, is, um, she's the one who did that in that match. Man. Uh, also, and um, I'm looking up the roster. I forgot about Dakota Kai. Love Dakota Kai. Uh, she, she she is she is a top baby face. She is awesome. Um, you're not a fan. It's not that I'm not a fan. I just I hate the the um her being like whatever she is with the kicks. I oh my god! Kicks. No, her kicks her kicks are awful. Someone has to show her how to kick before she can call herself the the kick master or whatever she calls herself. Before she, before she can call herself, it is some of the weakest kicks outside of the, the the face wash that she does in the corner where she loops around. That's the only thing that looks kind of devastating with her kicks. It's just like she does that whole jumping kick thing where she barely touches you. you now, I don't know. It, just, it they don't look like strong kicks to me. I love Dakota Kai. I love her character. I love the whole underdog part of her and everything yep. like that. But. I, I feel like she needs a new gimmick or learn how to kick. Um, Peach, what do you have to say on the subject? Uh, I've never seen her wrestle. I don't think you've probably ever seen her. <laughs> you should start watching NXT, Peach. It's one hour a week. You just need Walton's WWE Network. No, I think he has I a have the network. Oh, you have the network? Wait, wait a second. You have the network. Yeah, but you can't watch, like, what happens on Raw and SmackDown on it. Which is why I'm telling you to watch NXT. It's fucking useless. Watch NXT. It's better than Raw and SmackDown. Mm-hmm. So, let, let's move over to... So, just to kind of keep moving this subject along. <laughs> do you guys have some of your favorite women's matches of all time? 
of all time. Yeah, like what, like rest picks. What might be like your favorite women's match that you've ever seen? You put me on a spot here, Walt. All right, I'll I'll I'll, I'll talk through. Yeah, you go, you go first. So it's a toss up for me between Bailey Sasha at NXT Takeover. Uh, Bailey Sasha won that match. I think that match set the standard and set the bar for women's wrestling at a high point that it, it stole the show. That show was headlined by Kevin Owens and Finn Balor in a ladder match, and Sasha Bailey stole the show. It was it was excellently done. I know Raspage, you and I have gone back and forth. Um, I think that match is better than their set, than their Iron Man match, but and either I think way, the second one was better. Exactly. So the second but, one's always better. Um, <laughs> so that one and Oscar versus Charlotte at Mania that just passed. Um, the reason why I have that one up there and that one. That one kind of slightly edges it a little bit for me because I think that one delivered. Like, that one had high expectations, and I think, it to me, it met those expectations. Um, maybe just met them. Like, it didn't go over, but it was exactly the match that I think it needed to be, and it had the surprise ending, especially because I, you know, all of us thought that Charlotte was, or Asuka was going to win to keep her on the feet of streak alive. But, Char- and... The be- the reason why I like it too is that Charlotte beat Oscar. Oscar was undefeated, and we said that's reasonable that Charlotte beat Oscar. It wasn't yeah. something. St- it wasn't something stupid. Now with the whole Carmella thing beating Oscar and things like that, it was just like Charlotte could legitimately beat Oscar, and she did. There was no issue there. Um, that match, I think basically reset the bar again for everything kind of going forward and i think it laid the groundwork for a mania headlined by a woman um with that being said mike were you able to, to think of anything um, that or what I, I was is- trying not to go with that one and i think i'm going to agree with you that that's probably the best one i've ever seen which one? Um, women's match wise, the the WrestleMania, Oscar Charlotte, and, Oscar, and Charlotte. Yeah. Um, I, I was trying to think like of something off the wall. Uh, uh, I, I believe there was, about, and I uh, I can't tell you which it? one. Um, I was trying to think of the the match that what was a ca- Cameron uh, says on Tough Enough. Yeah, it's um, that's that? what the joke I was gonna make. <laughs> um. <laughs> that's what I was trying to think. I can't remember what she said. She says um, Alicia, Alicia Fox. Fox versus Molina. Yeah, yeah, I was trying to think of that, but that did what not. A, what uh, a random episode of Monday Night Raw, <laughs> Raw she said, was her great, not just women's match, just greatest <laughs> wrestling match of all time. Uh, she said she was a huge fan of wrestling, and then said that was her, her yeah, match of all time. Which, again, um, not trying, not trying to insult these people, but come on. Yeah, uh, actually, I'm I'm trying to remember. I'm assuming it was a takeover, but I could be wrong. I think there was a match between Emma and Paige on NXT, and I'm trying to picture it. And I remember like thinking how awesome it was because I, I think that I, I don't believe Emma won. I'm pretty sure it was a one-on-one match. It, I, it was, I, I remember it bits and pieces because it was one of the first times I've seen Emma's finisher. And I was like, God damn, does that look like it hurts? Where she did the whole pop in the bubble thing and does the bridge and then cranks on her neck. Yeah. Like, uh, it's that, a, it's a that match, I, uh, and it could have been multiple matches from her that I'm mixing all into one. But I, I, I think I remember specifically her doing it to Paige. And I'm um, just thinking, like, God damn. Like, one, one of the better NXT matches, too, and it's when Sasha won the title, was the... Uh, four horse women of WWE fatal four way. Yeah. Charlotte, Becky, Sasha, and Bailey. I believe Charlotte was the champion at the time and Sasha ended up like pinning Bailey. Yeah, pinning Bailey for the title, which I think that evident evid- it eventually set up their feud at the takeover. Um that was a really good one. I wish they would we almost got that rematch again at WrestleMania. 33 or 32 i'm sorry but we got just the triple threat which that match was that was the best match on the card that night that we were at um which is which is awesome to say 
that like that like it wasn't a great WrestleMania to begin with, but when the women I think had the chance there, they definitely stole the show on a weaker side card. It so su- it, it sucks to kind of put it in that frame framework that it had to be a weak WrestleMania card for the women to steal the show. I'm not, but I think at the time it's what they needed to do to yeah. kind of just establish themselves that this isn't bra and panties matches. This isn't um, the stupid shit that was from the past. Um, this is actual women's wrestling. Peach, do you have any women's matches that come to mind? Well, like Lita was always my favorite, but I remember her more in like mixed mixed tags where she would wrestle the guys as well yeah we did get a, we have gone a, a very far away from intergender wrestling um do you think we'll go back towards that like especially with these new like ronda looked great with that you know at wrestlemania i i think so i think they are starting to lay the footwork for some of it but not fully commit to it. Like you you just saw it recently with Oscar versus James Ellsworth. Um they've done it in the past. China had legitimate um rivalries with Chris Jericho and Jeff Jarrett for the Intercontinental Championship. Like those were like and it again they turned it shitty by making it a good housekeeping match. Um which honestly, like even just thinking about it now, it kind of makes sense at the time because I think how the storyline was kind of just progressing with, I think them treating China as a quote unquote woman, you can need to work in the kitchen type of stuff. Um, but yeah, that's not you. You won't ever see something like that. But I think you do. Like um, Joey Ryan is a huge proponent of intergender wrestling. Him and um, Candice LeRae. Yeah. Yeah, they were. They basically redefine that whole industry. Um, I would love to see another mixed match challenge, except with the women to be able to fight against the men. But then it it is true that you do have to be careful with what boundaries you cross and things that's, like that. I, see, I think they're set up for the, let's say an intergender match um, with all the MMA fighters coming up. I don't even think it's like the MMA thing. I think it's more like the better quality of a wrestler where the guys aren't going to hurt the women. Yeah, but like it's still in my mind, I think one of the reasons they might not do it is because it almost has to be believable too. And not to say and not to say it's not believable that Charlotte couldn't beat some of the, the men's wrestlers up. But like I can I mean – would you seriously think somebody like James Ellsworth could actually beat up Ronda Rousey? Let's say, no. Like, I mean, uh, see, and something like that, you must start feeling bad, girl. Yeah, but you must feel bad for Ellsworth <laughs> in well, that right, situation. Right, right. Well, but that, well, that's, that's the character. I was gonna say, yeah. Uh, well, Peach, I agree with you. Um, what? Like, yeah. Let's. I would say remove Ellsworth from the conversation because his character is set up to lose to women to basically try yeah. to act as that stronger man but like i i don't even know um i can't even Wait, who's that. the man on the moon guy that wrestled women a bunch andy kaufman andy kaufman but that was like his character too was yeah and he was made to be believable that a woman could beat him yeah um that really quick before we got too far away from it um the match i was referring to was actually the championship match of the the um, NXT Women's Championship. It was Paige versus Emma. Was that on the first NXT um, pay-per-view? Um, was it the first takeover? It was... Uh, 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 um, June 20th. Now, it looks like it was on an episode of uh, NXT, it looks like. Because I remember, I remember that first NXT Takeover special. That it says they, she was crowned on June twentieth, and it was, it was aired on July twenty fourth. <laughs> so that was recorded well ahead of time. Um, they might they might have wrestled again for it afterwards, but it looks like it was a normal episode of NXT. Um, now what we remember Natalia from, they had a second tournament. 
when Paige went up to the main roster. That's right. Was that Natalia versus Charlotte, and then yes. Charlotte won? Okay. Yeah. See, I was remembering Natalia versus Charlotte, but then I also remember Paige won the tournament. So that's, that's why I was. Right. That's did, that's why. So they did I. The, um, uh, they had Flair, Ric Flair, and Bret Hart in each of their yeah. corners during that match. Yeah. Um, the I I think I'm pretty sure it was the Paige Emma match for the original title was on the very first NXT Takeover special that they did, um, but. I remember it specifically because I didn't really get a chance to watch it because it was right when the network started and the stream went out during that match because they they were still um, load testing the MLB the network yeah because it was the first um, first ever live special on the that that was the Charlotte and Talia was the first ever NXT takeover. Oh, okay. The um. Wait a minute. Well, uh, I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The first ever, first ever special was not Takeover, right? It was just um. I yeah. thought it was just NXT Takeover, and then they started calling them NXT Takeover. Each event NXT Takeover. Well, the very first NXT Takeover that had Adrian Neville and Tyson Kidd. No, the first the NXT main, the main the event. First for the first Takeover. As I said, it, there are two different things. Um, that was not called Takeover. I think what you're referring to. Yeah, I'm looking it up now. It wasn't. Um, it, I think I think it had a NXT nickname, Arrival. NXT I was going to say it had a nickname to it. It didn't have um, Takeover. Um, NXT Arrival had Paige versus Emma, and it was just for the NXT Women's Championship. But I remember that match because it was. Um, it basically the stream cropped out or dropped out or something like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, <laughs> Peach. Anytime we have like dead air, I just go to Peachy. It's yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I mean, so what? I so know, where, where are I, we like, at here? I'm I'm excited for the um. <laughs> I like that. Where where are we at here? What are we doing? <laughs> um, I'm I'm excited for the pay per view. Um, they I I don't like the way it was announced. As normal with – like, I don't think Stephanie should have been the one announcing it because she didn't fucking do any of this. It was Triple H. Triple H treated the wrestlers like wrestlers. Hold on, Peach. What was your little smirk there? Do you disagree? Uh, it's a woman announcing it. It's the woman of the company announcing an all-women's WrestleMania – like, an all-women's pay-per-view. Yes, but, like, I, I understand that, but it's not like she was the one that put. She didn't push for it. Like, she never pushed for women's wrestling. There's the big tweet about, uh, from AJ Lee when Stephanie was congratulating a, uh, I forget who it was. Someone won, someone did something in the world of women's sports. And then AJ Lee responded back, well, why don't you actually treat your own wrestlers or your own women with the same respect and dignity and things like that, and she had to chalk it up. Stephanie has not supported women's wrestling the same way as Triple H has. But she has been the face of women's wrestling since I, this whole revolution. No, 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 on, the, on, on, on screen. On, on screen, On yes, screen, I, she has been. Yeah. So that's... A, a, I sadly agree with Peachy in the sense that she had what, to be the one Linda because she's it. been on screen the face of it she's she's, she's been it ever since she's ever WWE. since they switched it from the divas title to well, the, the women's title and all that stuff it, that was stephanie stephanie yes. was there at the forefront she you're, was you're. the one that gave the title to charlotte she's been the one she's the one that came out and said we're going to have a women's revolution and all this other stuff regardless of whose idea it was she's been at the forefront well, of just it so it fair, makes sense for who, her to be whoever there. gave him a fair yeah i, I you're, you're like PJ. You could chalk most good things up in WWE to Triple H. All, <laughs> most of the bad things are to the McMahons. Like that's just the way it is right now. Well, no, the good and bad things are. That's like the internet wrestling side of stuff is more of Triple H. Definitely NXT Triple H. I think the C uh, the cruiserweight division two hundred five live. That's all Triple H now too. Um, but he just it's. Again, Triple H didn't necessarily push this women's division. Like, he always, he said, like, you've earned the main event. 
So right. he's creating good talent. That that's his job is to create he's good talent. Great, he's I don't know that he's creating talent. it. I developing think he's it. I think he's giving good talent a chance, but he also understands the in the weirdest way possible that you have to almost separate this talent because I think he has an old school mindset to him that he knows that not all these guys are future champions, let's say, but people are still interested in them. So I I, I think that's one thing that Triple H has kind of understood that there's a way to mix what people consider current, you know, smarky, hardcore wrestlers, uh, you know, that, that love these indie guys and also be able to keep your Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman and, and, and these guys kind of out there, you know, like it, there's certain guys that are not going to be the heavyweight champion. They're not going to be the top guy in the company, but they can be the top guy on 205 Live and they can promote the hell out of them. You know, they exactly. can throw guys over at, at UK NXT. You know, a guy like Pete Dunne is going to be huge on that show. I think he's going to be huge in WWE eventually. But I'm, right now, he'll get the time to be the main guy there. Him, Mustache Mountain, those guys, they will be prominent fixtures of that show week in and week out. Because NXT is stacked. But he understands that. That these guys need places to not get lost in the shuffle almost. Kind of like what they do in the main roster, which sucks. Um, but they can... It, They'll give Pete Dunne time. He'll give Tyler Bate time over in, in WWE in the UK NXT instead of the current NXT. You know, it's just I, I think he's got that understanding of the business that Vince might not right right now, um, and I think he's using that to his advantage, and that's what people love. Yeah, but yeah, the whole women just to instead of like not to drift <laughs> off on the men's side because yeah. I I could I'm going to progress in two weeks next week whatever the hell it is because i looked at their roster and british strong styles on their roster and i'm like they're showing up and i want to see those guys <laughs> but then I, i'm not even lying about this either to legitimately tie it into women's i was like tony storm's a part of this i want to see her live before she goes over to wwe on a full-time status it's like this is a great opportunity to be able to see her live uh, and mm-hmm. not in in the creepy way like in the actual <laughs> i want to watch her wrestle um, a little bit of both, well, a little bit of creepy. <laughs> nah, I'm more concerned about Batista's dick size. Um, and if it's blue, yeah. But the um, but yeah, no, it, you're right. Stephanie on WWE Raw main TV has been the face of this women's revolution thing, and I think that's where it's just put a woman in charge, a woman in charge of it type of thing but i think for at least me and rest pass as well as probably a lot of people that will listen to the show you understand that triple h is the mastermind behind this that actually put the women on the map and like you like we just all described there with how like wwe's doing its own territory system essentially he created the slots for these women um i'm honestly surprised we didn't get a women's only pay-per-view in nxt first yeah, I'm I'm a little shocked too, and to be honest with you, I wouldn't. Whenever they're doing this, I don't. They're not. They're not due for another takeover, then, are they? No, they only do five a year now. Yeah, before, I know, before... and and they're usually they're broken up every couple months. That'll be. Uh, I mean, it'll be a couple months. Well, it's no, it's um, they do. Yeah, no, they, they already announced it. I know it's a bad thing. I well, was gonna the... say it, it would be nice to have a a women's uh, takeover. Well, I think it would be great if WWE generally stole that one night only idea from TNA and did those shows at full sale again. Um, and you do at full sale. Like, well, WWE, you can't, well, I can't complain about it. At all women, they did an all women's tournament, NXT, essentially. Yeah. Um, with the May Young Classic. So I, it's hard to say. It's Yeah, you can't do a, you can't complain too much, I think, about an all women's pay per view when they did that tournament and they'll be doing it again and it'll be leading into that so yeah um but what um i guess like yeah so the whole announcement i think was terrible but i'm generally behind the idea and i love it i think it's i think the time is right do you think they're trying to capitalize on the popularity of the tv show of glow like bringing back the popularity of that 
No, I don't know. It's just I think they're just getting on the popularity of uh, the women's women's rights. How many Obviously, how many seasons how many seasons is Glow in? I think Two, it's right? On its second, so, yeah, yeah, just I, released. I, I actually, month. I'm going to reverse what you just said, Peach, and I think the reason why Glow, and I have not seen it. I've heard it was awesome. I've heard it's awesome. I Mark will Maron eventually watch it. it. I will Allison definitely Brie watch is phenomenal it. Phenomenal in it, but as well. You can also probably say that this whole women's revolution that's been happening has actually helped Glow's ratings a little bit. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. It's not a uh, – the women's revolution thing has started just with the – I'll go the nation and the world's perception of gender equality, making sure women are treated the same way as men. Um, you got it like the USA soccer team. They protested and protested that, you know – FIFA needs to pay them the same salary as the men's type stuff. You disagree with that? No, I don't think it'll ever happen. It, I don't, I just, don't. They can get percentage or whatever, but men's brings in billions and women's brings in hundreds of millions. Yeah, I yeah, you're definitely not. But like that, that's where kind of a lot of this stuff started, and um, the whole women's equal rights thing, and then in WWE. They just kind of, again, pushed the women's wrestlers to... They gave them the opportunity to shine. Um, they're, they're, the women's division was always good in NXT. And one match at an NXT TakeOver just showed how dominant and how top tier it was when it stole the show. From a Kevin Owens, Finn Balor. Even on that same TakeOver, you had uh, Juice, and, Juice and Thunder Liger versus Tyler Breeze. Tyler Breeze was a huge star in NXT, legitimate star, and he got a unique match with uh, Liger, which that was like the one of the first times like Dota has ever brought in an outside talent for one match. Um, but yeah, like I think um, that's where the WWE then started to push for it. It's not like it's not like it was their idea and they were on the forefront of it. It was just the natural course of the world we live in today which is good which is good um and and wwe as we know likes to feel like they're at the forefront of all all, all of this, those yep. things and yep and and if that's what helped get um these women actual time then that's awesome i mean it, it's it's fine go ahead take credit for it wwe take, take credit for this being the only first ever pay-per-view of of uh, yeah. all women did Go ahead, pat yourself on the back. It's fine. As all, it, yeah, they promote it right, and it succeeds. Hopefully, it should. Um, yeah. And like, here's the thing. Now, and I'm thinking of this as we're talking now. It's now pretty commonplace for a women's segment to either start raw off or end raw, um, and it's not even a second thought. Like, okay, this is a headlining raw tonight. Okay, nothing. Uh, this doesn't strike me as unique anymore, which I think is a good thing. It's a good and a bad thing. It's a good yeah. thing that this is now commonplace for me, but I don't. You don't want to um, just rest on it. Um, you just you need to make sure you keep pushing forward with it and not just kind of let this fall to the back burner. Like, okay, it's just this is now normal. Um, but it's good that it is just because then it takes away like that kind of shock and all of like, oh, it's a women's main event on. Raw, like we need to tune in every time. It, it it sounds weird the way I'm saying it, but I like. Do you guys under kind of understand what I'm saying with it? Yeah, I okay. I do. I think okay. yeah, it's becoming more commonplace. Um, <laughs> do you think in the next three months they can develop like good storylines for this match for this pay per view? I I think there already is some good storylines for the pay per view. Um, Sasha Bailey as your tag team champions, if that does happen. Yeah. Um, the the or. Or if you go the other route, the four horsewomen versus the four horsewomen, that's a story that sells itself real easily. Yeah, yeah that, especially that are really they, um, you... they're two and two. So Charlotte and Becky are on SmackDown, Sasha and Bailey on Raw. You can very easily have like two and two. Yeah, like have two of the horsewomen attack two on one of the TV shows. The other two attack them on the other one, like to set up that storyline. Um, you could even have the finals of the women's tag. Let let's say it goes across all of them. That you have the finals be some type of uh, 
Rousey and Baszler against Sasha and 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 um Bailey, or even the the two the two we don't know. Uh, you know, I, I shouldn't say we don't know. Some people know them. I don't know their names because they haven't been on NXT yet. Or or even uh, Shayna and one of them or something like that. You know, they, they, this doesn't necessarily need to be the four on four, but. I it's would like great- there to be some type of tease into it, whether it's the finals of the the women's tag titles or something like that. I would yep. love for them to to Set even be up. the start of it, whether it's the finish or the start. I don't know. But. I think I didn't think of that, but I think I think that is a great idea for this because yeah. it gets two of the three people on your on your current poster in your main event. Um, you can have Alexa Bliss in a championship match because it's Alexa Bliss. Um, and then... Um, that uh, that would get promoted to all but, hell, too. What'd you say? Like, the, the publicity outside of WWE yes. for that match... Ronda, have, Ronda Rousey is going to be in your main event. I think yeah. that is a pretty safe statement. Yeah. But, yeah, if you do the four horsewomen against the four horsewomen... Like that's going to be all over the news. It's just going to be all over. Yep. And and I know I know the all women's pay per view is going to promote itself already. But you put that there, and it just puts it in a different stratosphere. It just it's does. Also, and maybe, maybe they don't want to waste that main event here. Um, and that's I think, fine. I think this but, is the place where you. This is a perfect spot for that main event. Yeah, because I, I think so too. I think yeah, I think WrestleMania would always be the spot for me, but I think you're too many years down the line of it actually happening. Because like I said, like I think this year is going to be Charlotte versus Ronda main eventing the entire WrestleMania. So that means WrestleMania was at thirty six. Is that the next one or are we we're at thirty five this year, right? Uh, possibly. Yeah. So third thirty six. Then that's two years away or something like that and that that buzz just dies off um so i think this pay-per-view you need something big and i think the four horsemen for the four horsewomen now that you mention it is perfect for it yeah yeah because um, you don't you don't have to develop characters for the other two right now um no, where like you said if it was wrestlemania i think they would feel like they need it to you know like like shana has has developed enough that I think she would fit right into a WrestleMania main event, but maybe throwing two unknowns to the casual wrestling fan um, may not be as appealing for a WrestleMania, where this, it'll give it enough buzz around it yep. to um, bring a lot of outsiders. A lot of outsiders would come. I think so, too. So... Peach, were there actually, like, since you kind of, I forget how we spawned from the question you asked to where we ended up, but did you kind of have any questions? No, not really. Nothing? You're going to save them for next week's episode then, right? Yes. Yes. Good. See, now that's how you do a transition, Mike. (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah, so I think it's fair enough to say we're, I'm going to sit down and watch the whole thing, I think. Like the, you didn't complete uh, the transition there, Walt. Well, I yeah, know. Your segue, you, you cut it in <laughs> half. You did do the transition awful right there because you, when Light you transition, transition, you're supposed to transition, not go well, back. Well, he patted himself on the back first. <laughs> yeah. Save that um, transition for when you're done talking. Okay, I'll do that again next time. Um, <laughs> no, but I'm going to watch – this is, I think, one that I'm actually excited for, and I'm going to watch the whole thing, I think. Like yeah, I, th- I think so too. I think unless you get some type of um, like too jokey of a match, which I, I have a feeling there will be something there. I don't think this is going to be all all wrestling. Uh, you know, you're going to get. I'm not saying a bra and, pa- uh, bra and panties match or anything like nah, that, but you, you are. But I, I expect something goofy that I'm not going to want to watch. I just don't know what it is yet. I it, it as per usual, it's going to have a bathroom break match. Yeah. The thing about but you need that in yeah a four the, hour. The nice thing about it now is like a lot of the women's matches aren't the bathroom break matches anymore. I said this. This was a while ago. I forget. Uh, was it was NXT London? It was the London uh, takeover that they they aired live in the states. It was at like three in the afternoon. There was a 
I think it was Baron Corbin versus um anybody. Um I can't think of his Apollo Crews. Um Baron Corbin oh versus Apollo God. Crews. That was my bathroom break match. The yeah. one match that they had, I think they had two women's matches on there actually. I think one of them was Emma versus Asuka. And then I think you had your championship match with Bailey versus Nia Jax. Um, on that same card, and to me, it was like the Baron Corbin Apollo Cruz match was the bathroom break one. Uh, but they're, they're going to have like a battle royal or something that can be your bathroom break because it's not going to be fun to watch. You're going to get that's, the pops I, for people come. But yeah, that's what I'm kind of assuming. I'm Man. assuming whatever type of battle royal they do, because there will be a battle royal. There's no way they're fitting. You know, we're not getting six different. Uh, you know, I, yeah, I hope fatal it's not, four-way tag team matches. Yeah, I was going to say, I hope it's not like eight just mixed tags matches throughout yeah. the card. Um, But, no, I'm excited for it. So, the transition into next week's episode. Like how I did What's it What's next time. week's episode? We're doing the Peach Pit again, I think. That was oh, another wow. bad transition. Yeah, it's a bad <laughs> transition. So, um, this will be our third episode of the Peach Pit. Yes. Uh, where Peachy, you know, he takes over the show and basically just throws questions. I mean, more than usual. Yeah. He normally does take over the show with his charisma and his wrestling knowledge. And, and my constant arguing and bickering. This is, uh, we could call this AWP TakeOver. Instead of NXT TakeOver, AWP for Raven Work Podcast. What? You guys like that joke? No? Okay, we're just no, going to move really. along. Okay. It kind of fell flat there, Walt. Well, we found our title for the next uh, Peach Pit. Walt uh, kind of fell flat. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but the... Uh, the yeah, transitional we'll do, episode. Yeah. The Peach uh, Peach Pit will come back again next week. Peach, I know, will write down some... Hopefully write down some good questions that can really you know bring up conversation between yes. like myself and Peachy. Because I think those are fun when we can actually actually get to do that so yeah and it, yeah, it's I, just not commentary about the last week what happened the last week yeah yeah well, i like having absolutely no idea what's coming out of your mouth i and, also like that too i because i think being I, ready I, hey guys it. what's a pipe bomb <laughs> nah, nah, ah, yeah not say that. that not doing that yeah let's let uh, you know what we will get into that for those that you heard this we will get into that but we will get into that next week i'm not uh, yeah i'm not going to spend the next 20 minutes ranting about this that, that we'll start the we'll start next week off with that as your first question. Yeah, and okay. we'll we'll explain the the background and origin. Yeah, of that. I'll I'll look it up to let you. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure what it, it is. I think I can quote that almost. Be, well, also, I'll, Mike, I'll tell you off. Rest pass, I'll tell you off air. I've had some thoughts about this, but we'll see. Um, <laughs> but the uh, we are not staging a pipe bomb, Walt. No, we're not. Um. <laughs> You'll laugh about it though. It has to do with fantasy football. Um, okay. The um, so yeah, we'll do that next week. So, uh, rest pass and peach. Any other final thoughts on this week's episode before we uh, get to my awkward sign off? Uh, peach. Um, no, nah, like I'm looking forward to the <laughs> the whole pay per view. Um, I I think it will be fun, and I you know it's just more to look forward to in. The development of the WWE. John Madden, ladies and gentlemen. Rest pass. <laughs> Thoughts? Um, I still hold firm on I believe it should be women referees, special guest referees, um, and all women commentating crew. All I, women I stand, audience. I stay <laughs> yes. No no men allowed. Now I, I stand firm on at at the very least, Renee Young better be your main um, I that, main that commentators. I think is a huge I, that's, missed opportunity if they don't do that. That more than anything else, I'm I'm hoping for out of this. They they can give me whatever. It it would be nice to see. Um, I'm hoping for a nice mix of current and old. You know, uh, hopefully it's not a lot of legend versus legend, legend versus legend. Oh, uh, let's put all the new people in a battle royal. You know, I'd yeah. like to see a nice mix. I'd almost want to see a lot of legend versus new, not legend right. versus legend. 
I'm, I'm uh, hoping for a little bit more of that. I think uh. you can set up a couple of them. I think um, you can – so Mickey James versus Tristratus. While Mickey is a legend in her own right, she's currently an active member of the roster. Yeah. Um, so that makes sense. I think you set up Natalia versus Beth Phoenix. I think that's – those two to me are – they will always be paired together from their time when they were a team. And plus at the time when they were – two of the legitimate wrestlers in the model era. Yeah. Um, that they just didn't get a chance to really shine to the way they could have. Um, and I think, again, that makes sense because Natalia is an active member. Beth Phoenix is a quote-unquote legend. But it's still, for both of those matches, I would still consider them legend versus legend matches. Yeah. Um. But it, at least you're you're mixing in like like you said it's still active roster against yep. legend where it makes sense it's not forced yeah so but yeah I, I just like I said I don't I don't want every single match sprinkled in with a legend like let let some of the current wrestlers hold their own and have so, like uh, Peachy brought up earlier have legitimate storylines that are going to be solved at this yeah um yeah. So I kind of said my comments. I'm excited for it. I'll watch it. I'll watch it in full. I'll, I, my only issue with it is, and this is what sucks about it, is WWE partners with Susan G. Komen for breast cancer research. While breast cancer research is great, Susan G. Komen is a just terrible organization to donate the money to. So, um, well, I'm bringing in politics. Yeah, just yeah. every. I think this is the second time this episode. Damn. Well, what was the first time? You then you started talking about all the 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 women's rights and you got like deep into it. You, you oh, got well, outside. That... You got outside of wrestling. All right. Well, it's stop, it's... stop, stop Sorry. bringing the real world into you... this. Okay. What what if Susan G. Komen that organization was going to promote us and now they're not because you just bad mouth them. So. What are you a sellout? Yeah. <laughs> Rest pass selling out already. Yeah. Hey, nah, gotta do what we gotta do to the, keep the lights on. It it listen. <laughs> it is well documented places how much money does not actually go to research and to fund actual the CEO's salaries and things like that, and that's just a shitty thing that kind of happens. I I liked Susan G. Komen. They had awesome shirts out when they. I like the idea behind it. They had awesome T-shirts out when Dota Yi first did the partnership of everyone's like symbol in pink for breast cancer. Uh, I actually almost bought my mom one, just as like a, just her birthday's in October, so I was like happy, you know, happy birthday. Mom's a breast cancer survivor, so that's what's you know all that stuff's cool. But it's just like when you hear the donation numbers and things like that, it sucks. No. That you don't want to hear that. So, and that's what it's going to be part. Definitely partner with that, and it's a big going to be a big push on their side. So that's that's where I'm coming at with it. Um, I was just busting your balls, Walt. Well. I know, but I feel like I should. I there definitely I feel like needs to be some explanation on that in case someone listening doesn't understand where I'm coming from with that opinion. Right. So, um, yeah. So we'll we'll change it from being heavy to my awkward sign off. So next yeah. week we have look forward to the peach pit. Yes. Um, we already know our first question of what's gonna what's a pipe bomb. Um, in the wrestling world, not in the real world. Um, <laughs> well, maybe both. Maybe I mean, both. I don't know where PG's going with this question. So he might have the anarchist cookbook um <laughs> pulled out. Uh, just side note with the, yeah, never mind. I won't even bring that up because Mike told me not to <laughs> bring up outside politics. So, um. <laughs> So, but, but with, the with next the, couple of weeks will be very nice. Yeah, yeah we'll so have, after we it, almost it looks like possibly four straight weeks of relatively special episodes. I mean, if you consider the Peach Pit a special episode, which I do, yes, extra special. So um, we, yeah, we again, a couple of weeks of we, special. We always said we try not to do relevant stuff, but SummerSlam's coming up. To me, that's the second biggest pay per view of the year, and we're treating it the same as we did for WrestleMania. So we're going to do a full. Um, prediction um a full prediction of raw smackdown and nxt uh we are attempting to get some special guests on for each one of the those episodes as well 
Yes. Um, we're gonna do a. F we're gonna attempt to do a live reactions to SummerSlam as it's happening. So essentially, yeah, see if this mess. Yeah. <laughs> this little piece together mess. Yeah, we're like gonna. Peachy saying two words and then skip into the next match. Yeah. So um, no, I'll read the signs in the crowd. You know what? Maybe maybe we should just uh, have the bet get settled that day too. Maybe we could. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, that actually makes sense since we all be in the one spot watching SummerSlam. Yeah. yeah. I I've, I've been waiting for this moment, so let's make it happen. Um. Yeah, I think. That so yeah that's gonna be um it's going it, what's the, our order is gonna be going peach pit predictions reactions um, and then possibly another interview special unannounced I guess Peachy said interview so it's an interview um but we we don't know yet there's nothing yeah. official yet so yeah we're um, getting it, we're getting it it's lined possible up. we may have an interview episode with yes someone so. Yes, so those are we're we're looking forward to it. We hope everyone that's listening is also looking forward to it. Uh, found out oh, found out over the weekend. Exciting news: we have a listener in um, not um, uh, oh my god, why can't I think of the states? Indiana. We have, oh, we yeah. Have a, yeah, we have a listener in Indiana. D that was me. No, 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 an actual listener in Indiana. Oh, oh, really? Oh, okay. Yes. So. Um, that's exciting. We are reaching all across the United States. Um, <laughs> but with that being said, I guess we'll sign off for this week. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening. We hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we will catch you next week. See you later, guys. Can this be a fantasy football podcast? <laughs>